I think the very first thing that for me was the hardest thing to wrap my head around is just the sheer volume of information that you need to somehow memorize when you're taking anatomy. And I remember before practical exams we would have, people would come out with these enormous sheets of, you know, names and tons of Latin words that I had no idea what it meant. And the issue is that if you look at it like that, it's crazy and there's no way you're ever going to remember any of it uh, unless you've got a photographic memory, which God bless you if you do, but um, I'm not one of those people. And so what it really comes down to is associating all these new words and really thinking about their function and how they work together. Because at the end of the day, um, you know, every single muscle kind of has two forms it can have. It can either be relaxed or it can be contracted. And when it contracts, it's gonna be doing something. So, you know, if you look at your arm, for instance, and you think about your fingers, like you have muscles up here that when they contract, they are what pull up your fingers just like that. So they are extending your fingers. Then you've got muscles on the other side of your arm right here that when they contract, they are doing the opposite effect. They are flexing your fingers um, just like that. And so it's really important just to kind of, uh, you know, especially when you're looking at a cadaver, for instance, um, to just think about the general area you're in and what the function of those things are going to be. Um, you're also going to have some muscles here to do things like radial or ulnar deviation of the wrist. And so you have to have some muscle somewhere that's pulling here that ma makes your hand do this. Um, and so I think a lot of it just kind of hopefully should start from uh, a base of, basis of, you know, if you're in this general area, you're probably going to have this general function. And um, so you can really begin to group things together. And that's how you begin to compartmentalize this enormous volume of information. And to me, that's what helped get me through the practical exams that I had to take. And so um, that's that's really step one. And also in terms of like having a strategy, uh, you know, in my case, like we're learning uh, lower extremities or upper extremities, uh, it, it, it's super, super helpful to be methodical in how you do it and be very uh, focused in one area. Um, because if you just look at the spreadsheet as a whole, you're going to be like completely lost. You have no idea where to start. Whereas, you know, if you look at the anterior leg, then the posterior leg, then the lateral leg, and you just move your way down to like uh, the knee and then, uh, you know, farther down to the shin, um, hopefully you can begin to see how the muscles in those areas are all working together to do something like uh, plantar flexion or dorsal flexion. Like just really thinking that through um, helps and once you get familiar with the bone, and I, I highly recommend kind of starting with bones because at the end of the day, bones serve the purpose of providing an attachment site for muscles. Um, so if you start with just really knowing the bones, you'll know that, that literal the framework of the body. Um, and then once you know the bones, um, you're going to note that the bones have these tubercles and all these little grooves on them and things that create little surfaces. And the whole point of that is to be an anchoring site for a muscle. And so, um, you know, once you really understand those bones, then you can begin to learn the muscles. And once you learn those muscles and you really know where those attachment sites are in three-dimensional space, uh, it begins to make a lot more sense because when you think about what's gonna happen when you bring two points in space closer together, you're gonna have something like, uh, you know, flexion happening or extension um, if you're pulling these two points closer together. Like, it's just, it, it hopefully becomes a bit more intuitive um, once you really understand the bones and then you move on to the muscles. And then once you know the muscles really well, um, if you think about like the, the relative location of muscles, because you've got a ton of muscles, um, but muscles pretty close together are usually going to be innervated by the same nerve. And so like if you're looking at anterior leg, there's one big nerve that gets most of those muscles uh, in your quads and so um, or in your hamstrings. Like you've got uh, like sciatic nerve, that's a big one. And so it's just like, once you know the, the muscles and how close they are relative to each other and where these nerves go, um, it really begins to help out a lot. And uh, as you get closer and closer to test day, another thing that I would do, and I, I wish I did it sooner, is I would abbreviate things. So um, ATFL, uh, anterior talofibular ligament. It's one of those ligaments in your ankle. Um, and so it's like, I 
you know, at my school, uh, we had to write out the entire name. We had to get the spelling exactly right. Otherwise we would get zero credit on our practical exams and it's really stressful. So it kind of made me feel like I have to write this name out every single time I think about this thing or I want to like diagram it out on a piece of paper. Um, and that really hurt me because I wasted a bunch of time like writing something down and it's like you get diminishing returns the more you kept doing that. So um, abbreviating these things, just ATFL and, and really like getting to the whole point of, of, of even knowing all these things is landmarks um, because that's how you know on these practical exams uh, that you're right and that you're not wrong, you know? Um, and so the, the very, like another thing that's a huge part of anatomy is not just memorizing everything, um, but it's also knowing, you know, what are the big landmarks here? And, um, you know, after you've picked out like one or two or three landmarks, that's how you can come to that conclusion that this has to be that nerve. Like if you are, if they pinned some muscle, like if you're looking at the trapezius, like you know it has to be the accessory nerve that's innervating that. Like if it's a second level question like that, but it's just like you just see these things and you just know that they have to be that um, based on the landmarks that you can see. Like trapezius is a huge muscle, uh, very superficial on the back. Um, but like another huge thing of it is is orientating yourself. Uh, because during our anatomy practical exams, most of the body is covered. So you don't know if this person is face up or face down. You don't know if that's their left arm or their right arm. And so like you have to be able to know how these things look backwards and forwards and sideways, which again is really stressful, but it also forces you to really think uh, deeply about landmarks and, you know, identifying the radius from the ulna when you're looking at the arm and make sure you know which one is on which side. Is this the medial side or the lateral side? Am I proximal, which means closer to the body, or distal, which means farther from the body? Um, and, you know, are you anterior or posterior, so front side or back side? Uh, and it's just a ton of these things that, like, it, it, it gets beat into you, but it's all about figuring out the landmarks and the relative locations of these landmarks. And so it's like, that's that's a huge part of it because you've only got 30 seconds on our exams or one minute uh you know on these exams to really or not only orient yourself and identify those landmarks but then to make a confident guess or hopefully determination of what you're looking at and um you know it really sucked because we don't get partial credit uh or we don't get any credit if we misspell it so it's like uh, you know, it's it's very stressful, but um, hopefully, you know, and, and the thing is that a lot of the, the, the exams, like, it's, if you reverse engineer it a little bit, um, and just think about it, if you're the teacher, like, when you look at what structures they've pinned, they're usually holding things out of the way, so they're going to want you to know that this is not a superficial structure, so, like, if you're seeing that they're moving a bunch of stuff out of the way, you're like, oh, you're pushing this specific muscle out of here. So you're probably wanting me to look at, you know, some deep muscle within uh, the forearm or something. And it's just like, really think about how much effort they went through to, to, to get all these other things out of the way before they pinned something with a number on it. Um, that helps a lot too. And, and there's no getting around the fact that it's gonna be a ton of work. Um, but the last piece of advice that I'll get uh, that my uh, teacher gave me after I failed one of the practical exams was, um, you know, just how important it is to be focused. And a lot of people go in and you'll spend three hours in anatomy lab and you'll leave lightheaded because of all the fumes from um, the aldehydes that they use to preserve those bodies. Um, but, you know, you'll feel like you haven't really learned anything or you'll just stress out because basically what you've done is you've memorized a bunch of random data points. And the issue is that those data points aren't connected together. And so the, the key thing to really come out of the time that you spend studying anatomy is to be very, very focused on one area. So like anterior leg and just make sure that you're, you're very confident with every single layer of muscles in that anterior leg. Cause you're going to have like a very superficial layer and you're going to get deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, but you know, you need to just be comfortable with every single layer of muscles there and what nerve is going to come through and uh, you know, what's, you know, where is it going to exit through? What bone is it going to cross under? Or what hole is it going to be coming out of? Like what foramen or foramen? Um, so there's just a ton of stuff that uh, there is to, to take into consideration. But if you're focused in it, um, it does pay dividends. And 
I think it does make people better healthcare professionals at the end of the day. Uh, just having that experience of, of really appreciating the body and all the nuances and how complicated it is, but how amazing it is that at the end of the day it actually works and how how versatile all of these muscles are working together to help us do stuff with our bodies is uh, pretty cool. So I'm going to wrap things up with that, but I hope you guys find this stuff useful. Hope everyone out there is doing well, and I will talk to you guys next time.